He's been described as F1's talentless blonde, hailed as the new Nicholas Latifi, and some even say he doesn't know what a kilometre is. The sight of Logan Sargent's number two Williams car crumpled into a barrier has become a pretty frequent one over the last year of Formula One, with the result being the Americans' future prospects of remaining in the sport are seemingly under fire. But today, we're going to be defending the Logan Sargent agenda and exploring his racing history to see how he measures up against the other drivers in his class, and looking at some of the cold hard data to decide if his future potential can carry them to eventual Grand Prix success. But before we get started, here's your reminder to stay tuned until the end of the video to find out how to enter the newest subscribers only F1 giveaway. But for now, let's get on with the video. Let's start with a quick glimpse into the past. Logan's racing career in the junior formulas is a majorly impressive one. His time in Formula 2 saw him frequently outpace Alpha Tauri's Liam Lawson in equal machinery, and in his best season, he managed to outqualify Oscar Piastri of McLaren 8 to 1. The eventual F2 standings at the end of 2022 saw Logan sitting in fourth behind Felipe Drugovic, Theo Pocher, and Liam Lawson, and the gap to Lawson was only one point. Logan's first win in F2 came in Silverstone's feature race, where Logan was virtually untouchable all weekend, controlling the pace and supremely fending off a late challenge from Teo Pocher, demonstrating they have more than enough talent when it comes to wheel-to-wheel -to -wheel racing. There's no doubt Logan was excelling in Formula 2, competing for wins across the calendar, and at the start of 2023, many were expecting they would spend another year there really honing their skills, while potentially serving as Williams' junior and development driver. This role would have meant some guaranteed FP1 appearances throughout the year, and a lot of simulator time helping Williams develop their car for the coming year. What eventually transpired, however, was very different. Williams found themselves in need of a partner to Alex Albon, amidst a large docket of changes behind the scenes at the start of the year. The shock departure of Joost Capito meant leadership was scrambling late in the season to find their best driver. Thus, they promoted Logan up to the big time from the Williams Driver Academy, joining Oscar Piastri and Nick De Vries in the rookie class of 23. Now, comparing anyone from a backmarking team to Piastri's mercurial performances in the much upgraded McLaren would be somewhat pointless, and Nick De Vries is already out of a drive halfway through the year, so a comparison there is somewhat irrelevant. But the Dutchman's replacement in Alpha Tauri, New Zealand's Liam Lawson, provides a much better opportunity for some insight. Last time out in Suzuka, Williams suffered an ignominious double DNF, with Sargent's fastest lap being a 138.848, compared to Lawson's best, a 38.267. Lawson has been supremely impressive coming in for the injured Daniel Ricciardo. But is their shock performance really down to being a better and more talented driver than Logan? The data says otherwise. As teammates fighting it out in Formula 2, there was almost nothing to separate them, which allowed a certain amount of comparison on what was supposed to be a level playing field. And while the championship standings would suggest a hair's breadth more in favour of Lawson, eagle-eyed fans might be able to point out one key factor that had nothing to do with the driver's ability deciding their results. Logan was far more consistent in Formula 2, getting themselves into less incidents while Lawson, on the other hand, emulated a lot of their position as a dynamic and exciting Red Bull Junior, playing a more aggressive game on the road. This meant that rumours of Red Bull interference with Carlin abounded, some going so far as to suggest the team were playing favourites, diverting more resources to Lawson in the hope of landing more financial support from the energy drink brand's racing empire. But while the incident-related fortunes have reversed between the two drivers in F1, breaking down some of the data will offer us a little insight into why Logan deserves to be a nailed-on starter on the grid next year. The Williams car in 2023 is not one Logan played a large role in developing. It's much an evolution of the previous two years car, with decent straight line speed at places like Spa or Monza, with the drawback that Logan's first experience of it was 90 odd laps in pre-season in Bahrain with no private testing whatsoever. If you compare this to an entire year of testing for Oscar Piastri in both Alpine and McLaren cars, or Liam Lawson spending the first half of the season in the high-powered, highly competitive Super Formula alongside multiple Red Bull tests, Logan has clearly been set at a disadvantage compared to the other rookies before the season had even begun. Instead, the real measure of Logan's potential will be how they can measure up compared to the driver Williams have chosen to structure their rebuild around, Alex Albon. Alex already has multiple points finishes this year, and rumours of a switch to one of the circling bigger names, Ferrari foremost among them, have been growing louder. And glimpses that Logan has what it takes to match their teammates' pace have started to grow in their frequency as they've settled into their new surroundings. In Saudi Arabia, Logan was famously declared as having failed to qualify, with their best lap time deleted due to a controversial and seemingly overly harsh track limits violation. But the team principal over at Williams, James Vowles, has explained that in the base Williams car, before any upgrades were brought in, Logan's data had been getting very close in performance to his teammates. The Williams upgrades in question have been aimed at combating the car's main weaknesses in its underperformance in low and medium speed corner traction. But they seemingly haven't quite worked, which 
Rouge created a combination package that maintains its slippery straight line performance, but becomes easily unsettled in the first and middle moments of a corner. And this is notably when the moments where a lot of Logan's incidents have occurred. And while the costs of those incidents racking up for a smaller budget team like Williams are not to be ignored, it seems that there is enough data in Sargent's corner to convince James Vowles to keep them on. The word around the paddock is that either Liam Lawson, Mick Schumacher, or Felipe Drugovic are the candidates in waiting for Logan's seat. Mercedes team principal Toto Wolff has even shared Mick's simulator data with Vowles in an attempt to convince the ex-Mercedes man to take on Merck's junior driver for next year. But Vowles remains adamant that Williams' investment in Sargent is one they have to stick to. Here's a quote from Post Japan, where Vowles explained exactly where the team lies regarding the performance gaps. First and foremost, Logan is not on the same aerodynamic specification as Alex was. We have updates that are on Alex's car that are not on Logan's due to the amount of attrition we've had this year. So often when you see a performance offset, it's not quite what it would seem on the timing pages. Furthermore to that, if we look at the case of Suzuka, he did a build up across the weekend. As he went into FP3, he did a time that matched Alex. And as we go into qualifying, until the accident, he was overlaying line on line within a tenth of Alex's performance as well at one of the trickiest circuits of the season. So what is this secret data? If we look at this collection of the driver's race pace gaps per lap instead of by track position, Logan has actually performed better in the car in some races compared to their teammate. So what Williams will clearly be aware of is Sargent's ability to find pace in some areas where Albon can't. This is harder to perceive to most of the fans watching on TV. All we often see is that Logan has had an incident in practice or quali, was driving around the back of the pack, occasionally competing with a Haas or Alfa Romeo. So we write them off, not really believing that they are the talented individual they've proven themselves to be throughout their career up until now. But now let's look at the comparative finishing positions between the two Williams drivers where it seems a pattern is starting to emerge. Logan often finishes in a consistent position relative to Albert, but the gap in the last four race weekends is starting to show some narrowing. This means that the cars are starting to finish closer together, instead of a wider margin between them, like you'd expect from a team with vastly different driver ability levels, like comparing Red Bull with Verstappen and Perez, or how Lando Norris seemed so far superior to Daniel Ricciardo at McLaren in 2022. Now it seems Williams have a clear idea of how much they want that gap between their drivers to close before the year ends, with Sargent having been set very clear targets to achieve according to his race engineer Gaetan Yeager. We can only speculate, but it's not crazy to assume that a points finish is one of those targets. But if Val stands by his word that Logan's seat is safe for 2024, then perhaps some of those targets are more related to data gathering to aid in the build of their new car instead, focusing on making sure they build a car with the input of both their drivers, so Logan doesn't enter the year with such a sink or swim at the deep end situation. Personally, I believe there's a lot more to come from the young American. They seem not to have an issue blocking out the haters, especially when so many different peers in the driver's world seem intent on taking their seat. But there have been more than a few flashes of brilliance that should warrant their appearance on the grid in 2024. Surely that first point will signal the opening of the floodgates and the momentum beginning to catapult the American into a successful future in Formula One. So now onto the moment you've all been waiting for, which is our giveaway of some exclusive Logan Sargent gear. If you want to get your hands on a signed Logan Sargent driver card, a Williams 2023 cap, and an exclusive Williams 2023 poster from the London Piccadilly pop-up store, here's what you have to do. First, make sure you're subscribed to the channel, then head down to the comments and make your prediction on where Logan will score their first points. Then be sure to head over to X and Instagram and repost this post to bag yourself an extra entry. I'll be drawing a winner after the US Grand Prix in Austin on the 22nd of October. But in the meantime, I'd like to say thank you very much for watching, stay safe out on the road, and I'll see you next time. Champion of all! You are Kanker, four times title holder.